Good morning, folks, and the Lord be with you. Welcome to the Vicarage for another life fight. It's Mothering Sunday, great day. And here's our Bible reading for the day. 2 Timothy 1, 1 to 7. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Guard the deposit entrusted to you. I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers, day and night. As I remember your tears, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now, I am sure, dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. There's a cartoon that showed a psychologist talking to his patient, a woman. Let's see, he said. You spend 50% of your energy on your job, 50% on your husband, and 50% on your children. I think I see your problem. So, Mothering Sunday. And we're thinking about mothers um, giving thanks for the massive sacrifices that they have made to bring us up. There's always a great outpouring of sentiment on Mothering Sunday. Um, I'm trying to avoid that, actually. These days, reality, I think more than any time in history, should be part of the equation, especially in church. Um, we're reminded these days that for some women, motherhood is an accident and not necessarily a welcome one. Um, or that for others, biological motherhood isn't possible. Or the expression motherhood is linked to things like abortion or miscarriage or handicap or rape or the confiscation of children by authorities. And for still others, it's linked to overwhelming sacrifice or heart-wrenching goodbyes or conflict or separation or, well, you name it. Because life is what it is. And we live in a fallen world. Also these days, there might be a reluctance to think, to link the word woman to mother. That in this world obsessed by transgenderism, a mother might be a man or might have uh, no gender at all. Now, I don't agree with that, but the world certainly um, has got it on its agenda. And for a generation, people have wanted to call God mother even though the Bible never described God as a mother, but only a dozen times or so as like a mother. In the middle of all the chaos and the nonsense, I'd love to be able to say that the Bible gives Christians clear and consistent teaching on both the value and the mechanics of motherhood. But it doesn't, at least not more than hints of it. Often Christians would look to Mary expectantly, as the model of motherhood, but she certainly isn't. She accepts the role of the mother of Jesus, but she's only doing what she'd been told to do uh, by an angel. She doesn't really understand Jesus, which is clear enough by her attitude to him when he goes missing in the temple at the age of 12, by the exchange between her and Jesus when he changes water into wine by the fact that she and Jesus' brothers, thinking he's gone mad, come to drag him off home. Now, Mary is not the model of perfect motherhood, but she is an example of what's and all motherhood. She's there at her son Jesus' death, but every mum would do that. On other occasions in the Bible, mothers are mentioned, but it's a mixed bag. Moses' mother gives him up, 
uh, to protect him from death, but then, of course, ceases to be part of his world. Samson's mother seems to be complicit in bringing up a spoiled brat. Hannah dedicates her son Samuel to God. There's no real plan for motherhood there. Um, Rebecca gives birth to twins, Esau and Jacob, but plots with Jacob to cheat his twin out of what is rightfully his. Naomi is Ruth's mother-in-law, but the big character in that story is Ruth, who's willing to sacrifice to support her. There aren't really any solid descriptions in the Bible of good mothers. And that being the case, you would surely have to claim that Mothering Sunday is not really a Christian festival at all. Uh, and that's backed up by its history. In the UK, Mothering Sunday was the one day in the year on which the domestic staff in great houses would be allowed to go home and visit their mother church and, of course, their families. In the United States, where they uh, have mothering, Mother's Day on the second Sunday in May, that was all about honouring mothers, but it wasn't a Christian thing as far as I can tell. So, yeah, it's an odd one. A bit like Remembrance Sunday, where really we're trying to cram a secular idea into a Christian container. But I do want to say two things which help on Mothering Sunday. The business about mothers in the Bible. There's one or other two I must mention, and it's from that letter to Timothy from which we read Paul writes that he is reminded of the sincere faith which dwelt first in Timothy's grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice and which now dwells in Timothy in Acts 16 verse 1 it mentions Timothy's mother who was married to a Greek in other words an unbeliever so presumably Lois instilled the faith of Christ in her daughter. And that faith turned out to be so strong that she could instill the faith of Christ in her son, despite the fact that she was married to someone who didn't believe. A mother's life is crucial in passing on the Christian faith to her child. And that's the nearest thing that we get to being explicit about the role of motherhood. Christian mothers pass on their faith to their children. And that, of course, is life-changing and eternal life-changing. Now, there's a lesson. Love your child so that you can pass on your faith or even to love your child is to pass on your faith. And then let's do some lateral thinking. Uh, Christian word for love, which occurs throughout the New Testament, doesn't really demotion, it doesn't really describe emotion, but practice. To love is to make sacrifices, to decide to act, and then to act for the benefit of somebody unconditionally and continually. So, who was the first person who loved you unconditionally, continually, sacrificially, and completely, and hoped? and prayed and sacrificed for you. It was your mum. She might have loved you emotionally as well, but she's the best example of biblical love. In fact, most of the best examples of biblical love in our lives are probably true stories of mothers and grandmothers who work out their strong faith by loving their children so that their children inherit that faith. Anyway, I'll leave you with a story about, a, he's actually a famous preacher, Dr. G. Campbell Morgan. Dr. G. Campbell Morgan had four sons and they they were all preachers. Um, anyway, one time they were at home and they had a visitor. There they were. And the visitor asked one of the sons, Howard, Howard, who's the greatest preacher in, you, in your family? And Howard uh, had great admiration for his father. And he looked straight across at him and then, without a moment's hesitation, answered, Mother, she's the greatest preacher. Poignant, eh?
in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. for your goodness to us and today of all days in the year thank you for our mums thank you for the great sacrifices they have made for us and thank you because they have been committed to us even when we'll be when we were being a pain thank you that they have hoped and prayed for us we rejoice at, at uh, mothering sunday we rejoice because you've given us our mums and Lord God, we pray that you would help us to show the same kind of commitment to our children uh, that our mums have shown to us. But most of all, Lord God, uh, we pray that you would help us to bring our ch children, whether they're adults or children, and our grandchildren up to know Christ and, his cru and him crucified so that they grow up to inherit eternal life. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep all our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us and our loved ones today and always. Amen. Amen. I hope you have a good day today.